All right, you ready? Yeah. When I was about 15 or 16, my dad lived here. Um, my mom had sent me to live with him. I was having trouble in school and stuff. Um, so I moved here and I lived with him. I had moved away a few times, but I ended up coming back. I was molested at a young age um, by someone who was close to our family. And then when I was 15, I was raped by two men. Um, and I was taught to just sweep it under the rug and I was told to forgive and forget. And after I was raped, I started drinking heavily um, to the point where I would black out. And I started taking pills and I didn't even know what they were. I just knew that they would make me sleep for 24 hours straight and I was okay with that. I felt like nobody cared. Um, I felt like I didn't have anybody there for me at all. I definitely felt like I was alone. Um, I found out I was pregnant when I was 17 and I never went back to school after that. It was scary, um, but I felt like I wasn't alone anymore. And I had promised to give my daughter a different life, um, a better life. So it was scary, but at the same time, I was happy. And I didn't, I didn't feel like I was alone. After I started using meth and heroin, um, it didn't take long for me to start shooting it. And then I started mixing both of them together um, and I almost overdosed. And my mom found me laying on the floor with a pack of syringes and drugs everywhere. And um, after that, it wasn't too long after that that Jared and I had met and he he got arrested and sent to prison. And after he got arrested, I was sitting there crying and um, I was ready to get my backpack and go back to the streets. And his mom had put her hand on my shoulder and she told me I wasn't going anywhere. Uh, I didn't plan on getting clean that day. Um, I had asked God to take control of my life again, and I quit using drugs that same day. When, when his mom told me that, I knew that I wasn't alone, and I knew I didn't have to do it on my own anymore. Um, I forgot that people, I forgot there were people like that still in this world. Anytime my mom would have any kind of trouble with me, or if I was going through something, she would just send me away. and. Jared's mom, like, she didn't care what I was going through. She was there for me, and the whole time he was in prison, and even when he got out, she made sure that I was I was taken care of, and um, she just really loved me. Once we turned to God again and asked him to take over our lives, he sent us through the doors of this amazing church we have we're surrounded by friends and family who are cheering us on and want to see us succeed um things just keep getting better every day and we both know that we're able to set a good example for for my kids and for his kids in patience she would when i first met them she would tell me that god wasn't real and to see her now, she's always reading her Bible and memorizing Bible verses, and she's always praying, and her whole life is based around God and God's love for her and her love for God, and it's, it's amazing to see that. I knew that God had put them in my life for a reason, 
Um, there were times when it was hard not having my own kids there, but um, I knew that they needed to know that they were loved. I know it may seem like it, but your life isn't hopeless and you're not helpless. Your life doesn't have to be defined by the choices you've made or the mistakes you've made. There is hope and there is a patient and understanding God who's just waiting for you to call on Him and turn to Him.